Hey, it's Scott from MacChain. In this video, how to identify and measure the spreader conveyor chain in your sanding or salting truck. Coming right up. Working with customers to identify and measure conveyor chains in a spreader application can sometimes be a challenging process. That's why we've created a six-step ordering guide to make the process easier and ensure that the product you get is accurate and correct for your application. Step number one, identify the correct link size and chain number of your conveyor chain. To identify your link number or your chain style, a lot of times the number is stamped right on the sidebar. In a lot of cases when your chain is ready for replacement, corrosion has taken away all visible signs of the stamp. So then you have to physically measure the chain to determine the correct chain number. To measure your chain link, first of all, you want to measure the pitch of the chain. Now that is center to center on the chain pins. That will give you your chain pitch. Next, you want to take some calipers or even a tape measure and measure the thickness of your sidebar. You then want to measure the sidebar height, or your link height. Then measure outside to outside on the narrow end of the link. And then measure outside to outside on the wide end of the link. With those dimensions and a copy of our chain ordering guide, you should be able to determine the correct link of your chain. There are lots of different styles of chain used in sanding or spreader applications, depending where you're located in the country. Our ordering guide covers most common chains used in spreader or sanding applications, but there may be some that are not on our list. If you feel you have a chain that's not on our list, contact us and we'd be happy to walk you through the process of identifying the chain that may be in your application. In your application, you might not have a pintle style chain at all. You may have a straight sidebar cast combination chain, like a C77 or a C188. We have a chain guide for those chains as well. Step number two, identify your crossbar style. There are three different styles of crossbars used depending on your application. Style A, the crossbar is located in the center of the sidebar. This allows weld on top and below the sidebar. Style B, which is located flush with the bottom of the conveyor and flush with the bottom of the chain. Style C, which is the most common, is also located flush with the bottom of the conveyor, but is formed on the ends, which allows you to get weld on top and below the crossbar. Step number three, measure the size of your crossbars. First, you want to measure the crossbar thickness. Then, the width of the crossbar. This will give you the correct crossbar required for this application. Step number four, a critical step, determine the center to center of your conveyor chain and sprockets. To get your center to center, measure from the narrow end of the link, from the inside of the inside sidebar, to the inside of the outside sidebar on the corresponding link. Step number five, determine the spacing of your crossbars. So to determine your spacing, locate a crossbar and that becomes zero. Now count up to your next crossbar. This is every third pitch. In this example, this is every third pitch. Step number six, the final step of this process, measure the length of your conveyor chain. To measure the length of your conveyor chain, measure center of the drive shaft to center of the idler shaft times two, and then calculate from your predetermined chain link size, enough links to cover the top and the bottom of both sprockets. So with our ordering guide all filled out, it now makes the process of getting a replacement chain a lot easier and helps ensure that the product you get is accurate and exactly what you need for your conveyor. So I hope you found this helpful and for more videos just like this go to MacChain.com or if you have any questions regarding chain or sprockets call 1-800-663 0072. Thanks for watching.